Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 36. In this tutorial we are going to go full circle with our NPC just here. So if you remember last tutorial we ended up collecting the wood from the next village so we're going to cycle that back around and bring the quest back to her and start looking at getting a reward from her. Don't forget click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So there's a couple of things I just want to point out before we um, delve into some more coding. Uh, you may have noticed already that I am using a version of Unity which looks a little bit different from the last one. So for those of you who stuck around with Unity for quite a while, uh, you'll know that Unity 2019.3 introduced uh, some new visual aspects. Uh, most notably, the icons now look a little bit different. Uh, the layout is a little bit more simplistic, uh, but generally everything is going to be still the same as what it was when we first started this series a couple of years ago. So if you're starting this series, well, from now and you're already using 2019.3, the previous tutorials are still going to work, no problem. The other thing I want to point out is I have numbed down the post-processing a little bit. I think it was a bit too bright in the last tutorial and I may actually reduce it a little bit more um, depending on what we end up doing. So up until now we have this NPC uh, saying a quest to go get some wood and the wood appears in this not very big village and we pick it up. So up until that point we don't have much more to do and this tutorial is going to be one of those classic um, scripts interacting with each other. So what we need to do is we need to have that sequence of events of what we're doing and we've already got to the point where we pick up that particular uh, pile of wood and basically uh, this is the script for it. So what we're going to do is going to modify this script to tell it that um, we already have picked up the wood or rather tell the NPC that we picked up the wood so as when we go back to the NPC we are going to be able to hand the quest in. So let's kind of start towards the end of that sequence and work our way backwards or forwards as it were. So let's go to our NPC and let's go to our NPC choice script and if you remember this is the one which basically allows us to speak to the NPC and then take the quest. So we're going to need to add an extra piece of code in here which basically states um, that yes we've taken that wood so basically speak about the next thing that you have to say. So we're going to say public bool. In fact, we'll make this static now I think about it because we need the other script to interact with it, don't we? So public static bool quest complete and by default that will be false, obviously. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make an extra if statement here to say Yep, we picked it up, so we're going to do something else next. Because at the moment, when we speak to our NPC, after we take the quest, she doesn't speak to us again. So we're going to add in um, here. So if the distance is less than or equal to three, so inside there, but not inside this if quest uh, taken quest um, statement, we need to do a separate one. So if quest complete equals true then we do the following. So I'm going to save that and we'll figure out what we're going to do with the following uh, in a moment. But what we now need to do is head to our wood pile and modify that script to tell this script that we've completed that quest. So when Unity has compiled the script we will go to our wood pile and take wood pile script. And we don't need to add any more variables because we can just simply tell it we've already done it. So this is saying, yeah, all good. We've taken it. It's disabled. So we can say um, here, I think. Let's do, let's do it after, or rather, let's do it before the wood pile disappears. So we're going to say npc choice dot um quest complete equals true semicolon save that script <clears throat> so now when we pick it up that's going to tell the other script that we have it 
So we can go to NPC choice and now we can basically say what we want to say here. Now I haven't actually recorded any voice line here. However, what we're going to do is probably add that in next tutorial, I think. And the good thing about this now is we can quite literally use almost all of this code that we already have in place because I'm going to do it line by line because we need, still need to understand and change a couple of things, but ultimately it's going to be the same kind of principle. So we do need to disable the player so we can copy that line. We do need them to still look at the player so we can take that line as well. We do need the idle animation and we do need to turn off the nav mesh agent and the AI script. So I'm going to copy both of those lines. We do need to set the subtitle box on. However, I'm not going to copy this voice line play. Obviously, like I say, I haven't recorded anything, so there's no point me trying to put that in because nothing will play. You'll probably end up with an error. Uh, we will take this to say subtext is equal to and we will say here, what can we say? Let's say, thank you for this. Here is your reward. And what else can we do? I'm just kind of thinking, how can we do this? Let's say after that, um, we will turn off that um, box collider, so that's fine. And we will say, in fact, we'll take those three lines there. And we're not going to take the start coroutine because we're going to write a separate coroutine. But what I'm going to do is look at this one. So it's basically start select convo. So it's starting this one. So we're going to take this one here. and paste it below. And we're going to say quest returned. So now this particular coroutine is going to be for that quest returned. So let's say, thank you for this. Here is your reward. We'll have that for, let's say, three seconds. So we'll change the wait for seconds to three. Um, now, we don't want any of these option buttons, do we? because this, this isn't going to be an option. Um, so what I'm thinking is, if you remember quite a while ago, we had a uh, text box right in the top left of the screen here. And we basically used that for, I think it was enemy health, but now it's redundant. So we're going to recycle our original use for that, and that's going to be what our reward will be. So we're going to get, um, let's say, 100 gold or something like that. So after we have done this, um, I'm going to get rid of those options. I'm going to get rid of that uh, subtext and I'm going to get rid of voice line play. So after we've done all of that, we can basically re-enable everything. And all we can really do is just copy the, in fact, that should be without the E. Just copy what we have here, start, yes. So we will do these lines of code here. Uh, don't think we really need that one, but we'll take it anyway. So all we're doing here is re-enabling re everything once we've returned the quest. So the sub box is going to go away. Um, the collider is going to be active again. The text is going to be equal to zero. The NPC is going to be walking. Both the AI scripts are, or rather the AI scripts and the nav mesh are going to be re-enabled, but we can turn off that cursor lock state because we already have it um, available. In fact, I'm just thinking, because we no, we, we will have it because it'll end up dead center, won't it? And we need it center. That's, uh, yeah, so we do want it visible and we do want it locked. So that's fine. And then re-enable the first person controller. So finally, Let's head to our section here. So quest complete, this if statement. And we'll say here, start coroutine. And in brackets, the name of that coroutine, which was quest returned. 
Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Save it. <clears throat> so, before we test this out, we're going to do one final thing. And we're going to change at the top that text to say zero gold. So then it will change when we have the gold. So text, I'm going to rename this to gold display. And let's just have gold zero. So if we look there, that's fine. So now we're going to modify that to give us that 100 gold. So we need to add that as a variable. So public game object and gold display. And I think ultimately what we'll end up doing is adding, um, in fact, I will go to the scripts. And what I think we will end up doing is adding a an ultimate script to kind of control the amount of gold that we have. Um, so for now, this is just going to be a quick um, update that so we can see how it works. And then we can spend the time really working on that uh, probably next tutorial. So uh, once we have quest returned and it says, thank you for this, here is your reward. And after three seconds, we can then say, um, gold display dot get component and in spiky brackets we will say text oh close bracket dot text equals gold 100 semicolon and the absolute final thing that we do so we can't keep re-triggering this quest complete all the time because currently if we play it now we'll be able to constantly trigger that quest complete. So we need to be able to not re-trigger this. So first things first, as soon as we enter that if statement, we say quest complete equals false and save. So basically what we've done here is once we've picked up the wood, we've told this NPC choice that we have picked it up, the quest is complete. Therefore, when we speak to our NPC, we will run all of this. We'll say the quest complete is false. However, it will still run the rest of these lines of code. So basically it does what it usually does, says thank you, gives us our reward, and then we just get back to going about our usual business. So let's test this out now. What we'll need to do is quickly add in the variable for gold display on our NPC. So we'll add it just there. And it is that one. I'm going to save my scene and press play. And just make sure all of this works. Hello there. My name is Emily and I patrol a village. Ugh, that voice acting is terrible. Can you go to the next village and collect some wood, please? Um, yes, yes, I can, of course. Thank you. I will see you when you return. So obviously, if we try talking to her now, she won't um, speak to us. She will only speak to us now when we have that wood. So let's head over here and get that pile of wood. I'm hoping you guys have made your game look a little bit better than this. <laughs> so we've got the wood and that should now have told the script that yes, we've picked up that wood so we can activate the next section of the quest. Here we are. There we go. And we should see gold update to 100 and we can no longer talk to her again. Perfect. So we've basically looped all that back around now and the quest is now complete. We've made the scripts talk to each other, which is exactly what we want. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to expand that even more. And we're going to add in the ability for more scripts to talk to each other. Basically because um, we need to have a global script for any gold we have. Um, so we're going to have that ability. So it, that script will be the master update for the gold display. So we're going to work on that. And I think we're also going to work on a little cutscene as well. So when we enter that village over there, I think it's best if we have like a little cutscene uh, no, circling around the village or something. And uh, yeah, that's all coming in the next tutorial. So until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.